Aiden Bujic. Hello. We're doing a day in the life with yes. Aiden here. How old are you? I am 24, turning 25 in two days. How much do you weigh? 70 kilos. How tall are you? I'm 172. What's your FTP? 360. What's your body fat percentage? No, I'm set. My star sign is cancer. My lung capacity is at 125% for someone my height and age. I can consume 5.5 liters of oxygen. That's all true numbers, by the way, those statistics. I found out when I was doing uh, Commonwealth Games uh, health testing. Commonwealth Games? Hey! <laughs> yeah, so. For? For those for Malta. So, for those who don't know, I'll be representing Malta at this year's Commonwealth Games in Birmingham, uh, both in the road race and the ICT which is obviously a pretty special um, and awesome experience. So if you're anywhere near Birmingham, um, the TC is on the 4th of August and the road race is on the 7th, I believe. So look out for a guy in white and red kit. You won't Jesse. miss him? Yeah, you won't miss me. <laughs> Jesse, put a photo up, show him the kit, because you definitely got a photo somewhere. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'll be doing that. So as a part of that, I had to do some testing um, to basically tell the Commonwealth Games that I'm fit to participate in the sport. Um, so yeah, that's where I got those numbers. Look at him, he's, he's fit to participate. Look at the you guy. So. Look at the legs on him. <laughs> we haven't had breakfast, but we're gonna go pre-ride. We're we? gonna go pre-ride. Right now. Let's go, well. You got now? You're good to leave in the next. 9.30 rollout. 9.30 rollout, do you reckon Jono will get it done? That's uh, only what, 11 minutes away? He's not in his bed. Miles? I reckon Miles might be keen on us here. Where is he? Miles. Miles! Oh, Miles! You want to come for a pre-ride? We're just going to the cafe down the road. Right. Yeah, an hour. Live yeah. handling, just to come. Yeah. Ken? Yeah. Love being pre-ride. Actually, that's something you should ask your um, audience. You should be like, hey guys. Oh, well, don't worry. We'll chat out on the Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah Shout out to all the sponsors. Do a nice what are those? <laughs> these are Elba Optics. I think they're the casual line. Um, they're a bit they're rough. The sickest. They're a bit rough on the edges, but they're sick. <laughs> So we, we came here thinking that it was open, but they were just restocking stuff on a Monday oh. morning. So. I missed that. What was the coffee order? So the coffee order was a double espresso um, and a carrot cake. Oh, lovely. I, I don't really do, I don't do milk coffee. So it's either double, double espresso or a long black in the morning. Because our race is in the afternoon or evening. Do you all, have you pre-ridden for every race? Um, it's, I think it's, it's depending on what sort of race it is, I guess. Um, so for the most part, if it's a if it's a one or two hour criterion, I'll most definitely do an hour to a max an hour and a half pre race. But for like a I don't know a bigger longer race like a three four five six hour race, I probably won't do anything in the morning. I'll just make sure I, I fit in a nice thirty minutes of a warm up, maybe twenty minutes. Um, but yeah, very dependent on what sort of race I got. Because I'm not like. Pre I, my opinion on it is pre-rides are good. Yeah. Like they make you feel better Absolutely. when you start the race in the evening, 100%. But it becomes a point where if you're racing a lot, and let's say over the course of four weeks, you've done 12 hours of pre-ride. That is extra load. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, I think it's yeah. very, yeah, I think it's very dependent on the rider. You gotta be like, do it, but then be careful that you are, not becoming like addicted to pre rides. Absolutely. Same Absolutely. with like rest day. I can't chat about this this morning. Same with like rest day. People that always ride on a rest day so they have better legs the next day, which is good up until a point until you've done like Too hours much. and hours and hours yeah. more training. Yeah, 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 yeah. Even though it's light. Uh, yeah, still absolutely. It's still something there. But again, like big, I'm big on the pre ride, but I make sure that I'm not doing anything silly when I'm doing these pre rides. Um, but uh, yeah, still sometimes even just doing an hour easy, it's still low. Mm. Um, 
but I, I do. I'm a good boy. <laughs> I keep a cap on it. Or even like, instead of doing a pre-ride, just do like a very long warm-up. Yeah. Do like an that. hour and a half warm-up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which, which is again a pretty, pretty acceptable yeah. thing. I mean, if, if let's say, let's say we're riding to a crit and it's fairly far away, approximately an hour and a half away. Um, you know, occasionally I might go, you know what, I'll skip the pre-ride, which is an hour in the morning, and then I'll just do the hour and a half to the race, and then by the time I get to the start line, because I've ridden an hour and a half, I'm ready to roll. Oh. <laughs> oh, no, no. Ah, uh, just a video. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, get that into you. That's go going on. straight in. Thank, don't touch the sides. Oh, smooth. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually pretty good. <laughs> What do you do for work, Aiden? So, for work, I work for a company called Fullgaz. Fullgaz is a virtual cycling application. It's it's essentially, it's like Zwift, um, but instead of looking yeah. at avatars, yeah, better. Instead of avatars, you're, not better, just different. Instead of looking at avatars, you're looking at, <laughs> that's what I have to say, right? <laughs> the memo on that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it depends what you're looking for. So there's obviously the avatar and the gamification with Zwift, um, but Fullgaz is more of real filmed, things um, and then the data overlay over the top. So my actual job role is a, a video engineer so I'm responsible for processing all of the footage um, for the rides that go into the application. Um, we do have Iron Man content now but there's someone different working on that so. How many hours a week? Are you a part time? Or um, I'm technically, technically I'm, I'm a sort of a weird mix between the two. Um, my contract says part time but I, I work 30 hours so I think that's close enough to part time but yeah minimum 30 hours a week um, and yeah a lot of it's just spending time in front of a computer on Final Cut Pro yeah I see you on Final Cut Pro yeah yeah a lot of it's a lot of it's doing that and then um, the second part to my job is then um, aligning the fit files from the contributors filmed footage to the footage itself um, so yeah that's my job essentially um, and then it's pretty good it's pretty it makes writing very easy because I can essentially work my own hours um, and as long as the content's being pushed out one way or another I'm pretty much free reign to train whenever I need to so it's a good mix yeah it's a good mix. so how many hours a week do you ride usually with your training um, on top of that it really varies it depends on like what I've got coming up I guess but for, for the most part I sit between say I think it's 17 to 21 hours no more than 21 really um, and on average it's around 18 I guess so anywhere between there's about what I do and parental guidance warning. But seriously, I'm not wearing a helmet in this next clip. A few people kicked up a stink on Instagram when I put up a reel without a helmet on. There's no helmet laws in Europe. None of the commuters wear helmets. And I think this is an acceptable risk. We're just cruising around on a recovery ride, mostly on bike paths. For 355 of my other rides in the year, I do wear a helmet. Hey, what's your best result at one of these crits so far this trip? Oh, great question. Um... Easy answer. Best results definitely been the fifth place at um, Slag Van and Bach. So you got a fifth. So what are you looking at tonight? Um, Podium or you? Uh, you want to win? Like what's like realistic? You know, what's the realistic? Yeah, no, re realistically. Middle. Oh God, middle. <laughs> realistically, I think a podium's definitely uh, like on the cards. Like I don't know if it's tonight. No, I mean, who knows? I feel good. Like I feel you know recovered, rejuvenated. I mean, it's just. It's a bit, there's a lot of bike handling skill involved in these bike races and a lot of argy-bargy, which is, which is necessary um, to win. So, you know, I've gotten close. Um, I got a 15th the other night. Like, I'm there. I just need to perfect a finish or, better yet, get in an early breakaway and then be able to sprint from that. Yeah. Because these bigger bunch sprints, I'm just not. You know, someone like Miles can navigate his way around way better than I can. So... Yeah, I mean, we'll give it a go. If it's if it's not crazy technical, I mean, technical's good, but, you know, if it's too technical, I struggle a bit more than others. So if it's not as technical, I should be able to hopefully pull the podium out of my ass. You can do it! You can do it! <laughs> <laughs> so this is quickly turning out to be the worst day in a life video because we've just skipped Everything. two meals. Yeah. What did you have for breakfast? <laughs> so breakfast, I did have breakfast. I had the slices of cake, and then oh, I had four pieces of toast, just with butter. Kept it simple today. Um, and then for lunch, again, keeping it simple, I had tuna and rice. So not very creative. 
I know. Um, if my mum was watching this, she'd be upset with me. But um, we'll, we'll get creative later tonight, maybe for dinner. From what we've looked at, the course looks pretty flowy, actually. Um, I, we haven't actually, well, yeah, don't speak too soon. It's typical Dutch crit, so it'd probably be technical as all bugger down the back. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> the, part, the part you can't see is always That's the, worst. the technical <laughs> bit. But just from looking at it from this end, it looks quite flowy through a couple of the corners at least. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll give it a go. It's a nice day here, so it's getting keen. The left wasn't oh, it's pretty hot though. The left, no, it's sun's hot. out. It's yeah. very hot. But at least, like, I don't feel my neck. Like. Yeah. At least we might have some um, home ground advantage, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Not home ground advantage, what do you call it? Yeah, nothing like coming from a Melbourne winter. Nothing like a Melbourne winter. winter. You, know, you, know, you, got, you got the advantage. Yeah, you got the six degrees yeah. and <laughs> feels like four. <laughs> nah, we're good for it. Time to get done. Commentary time, here's our boy Aiden. Quick front on shot of him coming around here in the first 20 minutes of the crit. Now, course of this video is gonna change a bit because something happened in this race which took the limelight off Aiden a little bit. So, this is the start of the race. We're gonna switch from Aiden and this is Ben Carmen's rear GoPro. Now, this is this next two laps or one or two laps is the formation of the break which I want to commentate so you can see. So this is about 20 minutes into the race. It's been just full gas the entire time. Attacks flying, nothing really sticky. And we're gonna watch the race from Ben Carmen's rear GoPro and see how he firstly made the break and then how it finished. So this is them getting strung out here. This is the finishing straight. Very long, straight, smooth surface road. Quite rare for these Dutch crits. There's the finishing bus. Now there's, I think there's one or two riders on the front Ben's probably third wheel, and the race has been super stretched out. You can see there's some gaps forming, gaps opening up. That rider that just overtook on the right there, he was quite strong, so he's, I think, first wheel now. So, getting strung out. This is the end of the finishing straight. They're gonna go around this corner, and then it actually kicks uphill for just a little bit and goes on to this paved section. And this is where we're gonna see the action happen. So, riders moving up, riders moving up. This is Vincent Hopperzak from Beat Cycling. Dutch track rider, he won the crit that Ben got third in that I did a video on. So a little bit of a rivalry here and it's fully stretched out. So Ben's just sprinted out of that corner, Vincent's followed him and then there's gaps all opening up behind him and there's still, remember, that yellow rubber bank rider here. Vincent counter-attacks over the top just to keep stretching out to try and force a move and Ben just manages to follow. So you can see here Ben's accelerated, stuck onto the wheel and now that's a proper legit gap opening up behind. So right now, there are three riders, including Ben, pulling out a gap over the rest. So they've got Ben, the yellow Rabobank rider, and then Vincent in the beat cycling kit. Now have a look back here, full gas coming onto the back straight, and one rider is gonna manage to bridge across solo, and that's gonna be the race ending move, the race winning move, I should say, with four riders. So you can see this rider here, Full gas, he's just whacked that bunch, gotten separation, and it's just head down. And he's closed that gap very quickly. This is actually uh, from Evo Pro, Eamon Lucas. Uh, you probably recognize him from Instagram. So pretty strong move here, four guys, and he's, he's closed that gap. Now I have cut out a little bit. These are the four riders here, Yellow Rabobank, Beat Cycling in blue, Eamon in green, and then Ben Carmen here. That is the move. Now, where are we? What we're gonna do is we fast forwarded to three laps to go. This is it. They basically stayed out there, chopped off the entire race. Bunch never set up. Um, pretty much full gas chasing the entire time. And this is it here. So this is the first of the moves at the end of the race. So Vincent in green there attacks. Ben Carmen doesn't actually have to respond. So as you can see, Ben's at the back of the bunch now. Just a quick acceleration. We've got Rabobank Rider here behind Ben, and then Ben is on uh, Evo Pro, Eamon Lucas's wheel, so he's closed that gap there. And so that was the first of a series of attacks that are coming. 
super the guys are all cooked now it's, it's a 100k race so they're about two hours into it yellow rider bank rider bank rider now is going to counter very very good time to attack beat cycling guys just attacked everyone's on their hands and knees ben does sprint to follow and now again green rider there accelerates to follow again we'll see that again so rubber bank attacks ben follows green follows i'll just go with colors for now uh, green follows and then blue vincent on the wheel there that's with two laps to go so they're just getting two laps to go now ben then just sits on them Yellow rubber bank rider still has a bit of a gap. Ben's in on the other two and just recovers. They basically pull him, pull him there. Other guy still has a gap. Beat cycling guys just pull his a turn. So then Ben counters. Instead of just welding the other guy back, Ben surges, kicks, counters, gaps, catches up to the yellow rider, goes straight over the top, and, and yellow rubber bank is just been out there for a lap on his own, doesn't have the legs to get on Ben's wheel. And then you've got this situation where there's just gaps between everyone. So Ben just carries his momentum, stretches it out through that corner. Then the other two were like panic stations. They're going, shit, we got to close this gap first into this yellow rider. And then Ben's got this gap. Turning onto the finishing straight, we'll go back to the side on cam from the side of the course. We'll get a better look at what happens here. So now Ben, this is coming around for the bell lap. Ding, 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 ding. Ben here looks behind and just holds the throttle down. Ben doesn't want to be sprinting against these guys. Vincent's a track rider. Yellow, uh, green guy from Evo Pro's big, big sprint, muscly guy. So Ben just holds, holds the throttle open. And let's see how this plays out. Last lap coming through, and now it's just bury himself for Ben. Ben just needs to absolutely balls to the wall, bury it. So I'll speed it up, but we got Ben here holding on. Vincent's gonna, the beat cycling guy's gonna attack the other two and try and bridge across to Ben Solo. You can see him just hovering in the back there. Yes! Go! Go! Come on, come on, hold on, hold on. He's closing in, other guys closing in, but the line comes up too fast. Ben doesn't tire out and he takes it home. Pretty amazing as well, like for Ben as well, not having the best sprint in that group. He was probably the third or the, the third slowest or the Ooh. slowest in terms of a sprint in that group. Hey, seeing stars after yeah, that last one. Right. Right. Awesome. Yeah. So for him to come and, and just lay it all on the line and risk it all for the win, given that he's already gotten a podium here, is amazing. And you know, that's a quality podium there and really just stoked for him. Wasn't expecting it when I started out this day, but to see that is incredible. Um, and to see the way he did it was just super smart. Keep him going. Stop! Keep him going. Stop! That's what we want. What are we having for dinner? Lobster. Lobster tail. A lot of, a lot of 14, 14. 135 for a win. That's pretty good. 13, 13, they all add up. 14. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. 